live here at the Siemens Mobility booth. We're talking all things sustainability, really key topic here, so, so important. And Eva, it's lovely to be with you in person again. Very nice to meet you, a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. One thing I'd love to focus on is around business leadership in areas like air quality, health, well-being, things that are important to so much. I think it's resonating with people more than ever before. Can you tell a little bit more about the work that you're doing in that area? Exactly. I mean, we founded the Alliance for Clean Air in cooperation with the World Economic Forum and the Clean Air Fund at COP26 in Glasgow last year, which is where we talked at last about. Yes. And yes. we launched it with 10 founding members, including Siemens, obviously, as the yes. first founding member to sign on to the Alliance. Amazing. And we've done a lot of work since then because actually the situation is getting worse as we speak. When I started really learning about air quality two years ago, we said that 90% of the world's population breathed air that is harmful to their health. Yes. By now, it's 99% because that's what recent data suggests, which is sad, yep. but unfortunately it's true. So we all have to act now, and it's also clear that it's not only a governmental responsibility, it's a responsibility of individuals, Absolutely. companies, all of us because it's a topic that really belongs at the top of everyone's agenda and what we say at Siemens is that sustainability is really at the core of what we do it's a business imperative we agree with the United Nations position that access to a healthy environment is a human right and we have committed to become net zero across our production facilities and our buildings by 2030 and so for us it's clear that we have to work on this topic and we're so happy to be working on this with 10 more companies and we are in the process of launching the next batch of member companies so stay tuned on that brilliant and i love the fact that you're emphasizing there as well not just transparency around sustainability in the sdgs but real accountability and commitment to making those changes happen i think that's so so powerful so can't wait to see the next kind of implementation of that with the 10 new organizations coming on board i also think it's an example of one of the things we've all learned from the pandemic that importance of coming together you know we look we saw things to be like the hp we see consortium where you've got different tech companies, different educational institutions, citizen scientists, individuals, the public, all coming together for that common goal. So if we could apply what we've learned there around, for example, the vaccine to things like sustainability, wow, what can we do? We can scale so much innovation and change, can't we? That's amazing. Um, so alongside the Clean Air Alliance, can you tell me a little bit more about what you're seeing in terms of business challenges? So it's so important, as you said, to involve the private sector. Sometimes there can be challenges along the way in making that a reality. What have you seen there and how are you helping to overcome it, obviously with things like the Alliance? And that's exactly like what you said about the Vaccine Alliance. We're trying to learn from each other because yes. we don't all need to reinvent the wheel. What we need to do is we need to work together on common solution, which is why we work on two different action tracks. It's champion and innovate and measure and reduce. The measure and reduce piece is really that we're developing a guide. Actually, we're working with the Stockholm Environment Institute and with the Climate and Clean Air Coalition, and they have a beta version of a guide now on how to measure air quality footprints and how really to define metrics in company sustainability reports and then to also commit to reduction targets. And now the 10 members of the Alliance were pioneering this. This yes. is the first time that somebody attempts this to really have common air quality metrics established and we're looking at common ground because we're very different in industry and size so it's a difficult process it will take a bit more time but then we will agree yes. on what we measure yep. set a baseline and we will commit publicly to reduction targets and action plans so that is the measure and reduce track and then a very important piece is the second piece which is measure and re uh, which is champion and innovate Excellent. and champion and innovate means that we showcase our portfolios. For example, my look around this beautiful booth here, what we're doing at Siemens Mobility, really to make public transport more comfortable, more convenient, more efficient, more accessible. I mean, guaranteeing 100% availability, maximizing network capacity, optimizing life cycle costs, and then bringing it all together to optimize, optimize customer operations and a better passenger experience. And that's. One example, I mean, in Siemens, obviously, also in the digital industries and smart infrastructure sector, we have a lot to offer. Yes. But this is the mobility piece that I want to showcase today. And then the other companies have also a lot to offer. And we're putting that together. And then we're also creating awareness as champions for clean air via internal and external social media. We're doing interviews. We're doing videos such as this okay. one. Um, we're doing blog posts. And we're trying to develop something we call a business action toolkit, where we say, why is action for clean air important? Um, 
why do we have to do more? What is the health threat? Yes. Why do companies need to also do something because of economic reasons? Because people get sick, sick rates are increasing, productivity is decreasing. In some cities it's getting more difficult to actually attract talent because of air pollution. And so we're bringing that together to really have the data all in one toolkit and then spread it out into the world. I love that. I think some great points you said there about shared value. You know, people are looking for different things, aren't they? Now, from an employee perspective, that focus on health and well-being to differentiate it for where you want to work and who you want to be with. Same thing with, with customers as well. Things like sustainability are becoming a differentiator on which service you want to use, which brand you want to advocate, who you want to work with or take a ride from, whatever you want to be. It really is now a change maker. So it's not just um, you know a social impact proposition, it's a business one. It's a shared value, kind of do well by going good kind of proposition isn't it and I also love that point there about measurement smart measurement is so so important we need more standardization and that's a way for you know increasingly conscious consumers and stakeholder partners to be able to make those informed choices and scale them so I absolutely love that and before I go if we make one final question to the audience again we're in the heart of the action here at the booth if you had one final thing to share about something to look out for that people can follow online or a booth to check out if you're on site for the remaining days what would it be well, I'm the CFO of the rail infrastructure and the mobility software business and I think our interlocking and our rail infrastructure in the cloud operations that we're showcasing here are fantastic because it's really, it's a revolution what's happening in the rail infrastructure. When we really look at the moment um, in Germany, we have 3,000 interlockings and 50% of these are still relay based from the 1950s and what we're doing now is really getting away from the hardware dependency, no signals anymore, no interlockings, we can manage it from one central data center. And what you can see here, we, when you go to our booth, to the part of maximized network capacity, you get a glimpse of the future, yes. and of the future of rail, because what it gives you is 30% more network capacity, while saving 30% in energy, having 15% more punctuality of trains, and if you use 5G, then you can also save 90% of network cables. So it's, I think the business case is clear and it's something I'm very excited about. Shared value all the way, isn't it? Well said, well said. Well, thank you so much, Eva. Always a pleasure speaking to you. And I hope everyone here you. found that a super insightful and inspirational for the future. I would say the future's bright and it is that shared value all the way. Thank you so much and thank you all for joining us. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.